Today, we're going to do some problems involving the anti-Markovnikov addition of hydrogen bromide to alkenes, as well as free radical chemistry. We'll spend a lot of time talking about the mechanism because these problems can be very mechanism dependent, but we'll do some practice problems as well. First, try treating an alkene with nothing but HBr. What do you get? Okay, so when you do this, you should end up with this structure in which the bromine uh, bonded to the most substituted carbon. The mechanism for this involves a carbocation that looks like this. Um, notice the cation ends up on the tertiary carbon as opposed to the primary carbons because that would make the most stable cation. And then it just finishes out like that. But what if you want this? What if you want the bromine to end up on the less substituted carbon? What do you do? The answer is that we still run it through HBr but as in the title of the video, we also put it in with a peroxide and light. A peroxide is just any compound that has two oxygens that are bonded to each other. When you run a peroxide, through light, it separates. This is going to come into play as part of a mechanism that works in three steps, labeled initiation, propagation, and termination. The initiation step uses the peroxide directly. When the peroxide encounters light, it separates. Notice I use fish hooks instead of uh, arrows to indicate that an individual electron is moving in each direction instead of an electron pair. That will give us this good, good stuff, two free radicals or electrons without a pair. S still a part of the initiation step, that free radical will then react with the HBr like this. Remember that each line represents an individual um, electron uh, because we're using fish hooks. And that'll give us the most important part or component in our solution, at least for now, which is this uh, free radical bromine atom. The propagation step begins with that free radical reacting with the double bond in the alkene. Now, there could be questions about which side of the double bond the, um, the free radical goes to, whether it's going to be here or here. The best piece of advice that I can give you is that free radicals, a spot in which there is one electron instead of two, behaves just like carbocations because they are also missing some negative charge. They're missing half of it instead of the whole charge like a cation is, but it still behaves the same way because it has that positive charge. So where would a carbocation go? Here. And that doesn't just apply to this. Free radicals always behave just like carbocations please remember that because your professors will throw things at you um, that will test your understanding of the behavior of carbocations through free radicals in examples like this. But if you look into the movement of the electrons exactly, you might notice that there's something wrong with this. So I'd just like to ask you, how, how do you think that this uh, this product should be written out. 
it's a lot easier to explain through an understanding of how the electrons move. Remember that the fish hook represents the movement of a single electron. So, of the two electrons from this bond, from this pi bond, um, one returns back to the more substituted carbon, as a carbocation would, to form this free radical. The other, however, joins up with this free radical to form a sigma bond. Therefore, this bromine should be bound to the position opposite of the newly formed free radical. That is how we end up with the addition of bromine in the anti-Markovnikov faction. But we're not done. Propagation continues using the product of that first step as an intermediate, which essentially will steal the hydrogen from another hydrogen bromide, like this, using fish hooks. But what will this give us? It will leave us with the product we're looking for, but we've also uh, regenerated the free radical. And that free radical will go on to react with another molecule of the starting alkene and produce the product as well as another free radical. And this will keep going on and on and on until it's stopped, which is why it's called the propagation step. But the free radical is highly reactive and we don't want that in our product. So we need to do something else. And that leads us to the termination step, which has a relatively simple mechanism, but it may result in many different products. Pretty much all that happens here is two of the remaining free radicals react together to form a bond. And that could take the form of um, a bromine free radical. You also could have the the alkene or the alkyl halide with the free radical. So you could probably imagine two of the bromines reacting from a fish hook that would lead to the production of bromine. Or you could probably visualize the BR doing the same thing with the, uh, the radical alkyl halide. And that would give us in both cases, uh, there is no remaining free radical, which is what is important. However, that's not it. Remember, any two free radicals can react together to form a single bond. And this one looks a little bit weird, but you could also get the alkyl halides, two of the alkyl halides reacting together. And that would give you something like this. And that looks super weird. If you end up drawing these, you might draw like a ton of different crazy looking things. But the point is like, that it stops the propagation of the free radical. And it's important to note that there are very few of these in solution. That's why the free radical ends up creating another free radical and it has to react multiple times. So you can end up with a solution with like many, many times more of the uh, alkyl halide than you would have any of these. But this is just the byproduct of you stopping or terminating that reaction process. Let's do some more problems with this. What do you get when you react with this dicycloalkene with hydrogen bromide and hydrogen peroxide?
So you might be able to quickly visualize the answer for this, but there are a few steps that I would like to draw out, at least for this problem, um, because they can be pretty helpful for identifying nuances later on as uh, trickier problems arise. I'm not going to take into account what the peroxide is because they have different structures, but essentially they're all the same. This is hydrogen peroxide. So you'll have an OH with a radical, but its only purpose is to form this free radical. And the important steps that I want to draw out are the formation of the uh, free radical on the alkene, as well as the position of the free radical within that intermediate. Um, and then the other step that I find helpful to draw is second part of the propagation in which the free radical for this molecule is removed. And that will give you this. So when you're doing these, you can really just focus on one molecule of the alkene at a time with the knowledge that um, this stuff is going to go on to propagate more of those molecules uh, to react, but you're going to end up with the same answer for pretty much all of them, and that is this. Let's do another. Give this one a try on your own, and then um, I'll show you how I did it, but before we get into that, um, in case you aren't I guess you don't know uh, what AIBN is. It is just another way to form a free radical. It's technically not a peroxide. It looks like this. And when you expose it to light, it reacts in sort of a different way. Um, you get... And that leaves you with this. But the point is that you have two of these, or just any of these free radicals formed. And like these can behave uh, like peroxides in the rest of the mechanism. So I'll give you a sec to do this on your own and then we can check in and walk through it together. Okay, so we can start in the same way, skipping ahead to the formation of the initial uh, bromide free radical because uh, all the peroxides will essentially work in the same way. We can also, once again, focus on just one molecule of the alkene, with the next step being the fish hook pushing, where we form the sigma bond between the bromide and the alkene as well as creating a new free radical. And that leaves us with this. Now, you might be tempted to finish this up with uh, hydrogen bromide, just like we went into the last problem, but this is the most important step. This is where professors will trip you up the most. And that's why I said the most important piece of advice I can give you is to treat free radicals like carbocations. What would happen if instead of this, instead of there being a free radical in that position, we had a carbocation? The answer is that this would be subject to a rearrangement. Later. A methyl group moves to transport the carbocation to a more stable position within a more substituted carbon. The exact same thing would happen with a free radical. Remember, treat them exactly like carbocations. So it would actually also have this intermediate. Now we can run the reaction with hydrogen bromide. And that would give us our answer, which is this alkyl halide.
Let's do one more. What do you get when you react this alkene with hydrogen bromide and peroxides? Once again, I'm going to focus on just one molecule of our starting alkene, and I'm going to start off with an, a preformed free radical. The next step is the same with the formation of the bond and the new free radical, which will give us this intermediate which has a free radical, which we know is reactive. If this intermediate were a, car were a carbocation, how would it react? What will actually happen is we're gonna have a ring expansion. It's gonna look like this. Only then can we react with hydrogen bromide to continue the propagation, forming a new uh, bromide uh, uh, free radical, as well as our solution or our final answer, which is this. If you're having a hard time visualizing the ring expansion, or if you think that you're having, you would have trouble identifying uh, when a ring expansion is necessary, feel free to check out my video on carbocation addition reactions. Um, I'll link that in the end card here, but it pays a lot closer attention into carbocation chemistry, which would be helpful for these free radical uh, reactions, as well as paying very close attention to ring expansions and giving some tips on to how to do those well. But for now, that is all I have for you, and feel free to subscribe for more organic chemistry practice problems.